before I was diagnosed, I think um, I wasn't prepared. I think we live in a world where we assume these things always happen to, to someone else. So when it happens to yourself or a loved one, you, um, yeah, you, I think you find it hard because it, it's, it's something that you know goes on, but you don't think it's going to be as close as that. My journey with testicular cancer started uh, the day before my 31st birthday. I had some friends around for a barbecue and um, had a nice normal day that evening. I'd previously felt a lump during the week that I then had time to talk to my wife about and um, in discussion with her, she felt it was serious enough to go to the doctor and then two days later after seeing the doctor they uh, referred me to the hospital and as, as, as short as a 30 second uh, check I was then told I had testicular cancer. When Gareth was diagnosed um, I found it really hard, really upsetting. Um, I was really worried, it was, it was such a shock even though we suspected something was not right, right from the day he showed me. Um, I, we were shocked really, we'd only been married five minutes and you just don't expect at that young age to be facing something like testicular cancer or any cancer you don't think it's gonna happen to you so going going through treatment there's there's lots of, of ups and downs um, the chemo is aggressive and the type of chemo I had back is, is, is quite aggressive because it's aimed at young supposedly strong men um, and I suffered infections and had to have blood transfusions and different stuff through that as, as well as obviously then dealing with with the sickness I suppose your life is on hold just uh, planning things is, is difficult uh, I think for me uh, I remember meeting the boys once for a drink in the pub and, and that was quite a big big thing really um, we would normally go out for dinner and, and during this you, you don't really fancy food so so just even something as simple as going out for dinner is is obviously then put on hold. He lost a little bit of weight. I had to kind of keep encouraging him to do things like eat decent meals where he could. Um, but also his confidence was down for a while. I think he was really anxious, which isn't naturally how Gareth is um, because he's sort of very outgoing and very confident. So I suppose the miracle to, to our story is that is the fact that, that, that we, we fell pregnant with Annabelle. We, um, we'd only just recently that year started to try and um, we, we knew we were running out of time because after chemo you have to wait six to twelve months. We spoke to the doctor and we had a tiny window after my operation but before I started chemo. Having uh, a baby at the time or as, as you know is Annabelle to look forward to was, was certainly the, 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 a great goal for us at the end of our treatment. I think when you're going through something uh, as, as tough as chemo and, and cancer, you need goals to, to, to set and, and to look forward to. And um, when we had a bad day, it was definitely great to have to, to look ahead. Yeah. Now he's really positive, the, the charity in particular, he's had something to throw his energy into and that's really helped and having a project's really helped. So for a while he was, you know, it was difficult, but he's much more himself now. And the great thing is I'm pregnant again with our second child, so there's hopefully loads more to come in the future.